Now, he says, put away the line. That's an action, is it not? Right. Whenever the, the temptation comes to your mind to lie, how you doing today? I'm fine. You know, it becomes 
and Jesus bounce her. You're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the kid you said that was sweet. Yeah. So just like something that happened to me this week. Someone said something to me. And I became very angry because it, what he said was a lie. It was not. Instead of telling me the truth, he was to my face telling me a lie. And that made me angry. You can. <laughs> I, many times when you confront things like that, it, it can definitely make you angry. How we respond to it is what the Spirit works in our lives. Uh, the Bible speaks about not letting the sun go down on your anger. That means don't let this be a lasting thing. Don't let it grip you. Because the last part of that, it talks about how uh, don't let the sun go down your anger because it brings the power. You know. Alright, be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Your anger, when it goes on, yields and gives place to the devil. Whenever you let anger go on in your life, the devil comes into that. Strike out. Strike back. Then you're the one. That or if you continue to hold a grudge. How are you going... In the parable that Jesus told, he talked about how there was different people that had different things that they owed, but he forgave us. And this one, he was like, wow, he owed a lot. He owed millions or whatever, but they forgave. So this guy, after he's released, goes out and finds people that owe him a little bit of money. I'm going to start collecting now. Now, why didn't he try and collect that before? Because then he would have to give it to the person he owed, right? So now after he's released, he's getting his. And they're going to start building his wealth. And what happened? Everything came right back to him. Well, whatever the person who had forgiven his debt heard of it, everything he had to pay it again. And that's the same way Jesus said. He says, you're forgiven when you come to me, but if you don't show mercy in this life, and you don't do the right things in this life, everything will come right back to you. We, we may say that all of our sins is cast in the sea of forgetfulness, and that's good to say, but that only happens when we're walking in Him and continuing in Him. Right? If we don't forgive, how can we be forgiven? Jesus said, forgive us our debts, or forgive us those that trespass against us as we forgive them, those that trespass against us. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Why would the Son of God, given the instructions of God Himself, say, forgive us as we forgive them and make that our prayer? Because we're not supposed to hold grudges. If you don't show mercy, then God won't show mercy. That's a biblical truth. And as we walk in sanctification and holiness, it leads us away from things that are ungodly. And holding grudges is ungodly. Holy anger is ungodly. His Spirit working within us, sanctifying our life, will keep us on that right path of holiness, of forgiving people, of loving, of showing mercy, because we're walking in righteousness. We're walking in godliness. And that's walking in sanctification and honor to God. Notice he says, let him steal, steal no more. But rather let him labor. Whatever you were doing wrong, turn it and do something good with that. That's one way that, you know, if the devil's coming against your thoughts, start thinking good things. If the devil's trying to put songs in your head that's not of God, start singing a Christian song or something that is of God. If the devil's trying to get you not to read your Bible, listen to your Bible. <laughs> we, have, we have no... No excuses nowadays. Well, I was just trying to read it and I was falling asleep. Well, flip on that uh, the U version and start listening to it. it. We can put the Word of God in us. We can do things. So, whatever you were doing wrong, whatever the devil was using in your life to receive the glory into himself, turn it around and let God receive the glory. That is sanctification in action. Being set apart for God, walking in rightness. Letting our life reflect God's nature. 
compared to the scripture that keeps coming to my mind for all this is if you love me, you can keep my hand. Yeah. So if you don't love me, yeah, if you don't keep my hand, you don't really love me. Yeah. Jesus said in Matt, in Mark, it says, and he said that that which cometh out of the man, that defileth man. For from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Now Jesus didn't just tell us this for just a short time and say, oh, yeah, that I'm on the cross, everything's about grace, and this part no longer applies. He said that so that they would know the path that they were on when they, look, when he came on the scene, people were sinning, people were uh, divorcing their wives and everything for no reason at all, putting them away, killing them. They, the world was sinful. And God sent his son on this scene and told people, repent, repent, repent. Repent. This was why John the Baptist came and started leading the way for Jesus to come in and do the exact same thing. Right. Repent. 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 Repent and convert. Yeah. So the whole process, if you're going to stay the way you are, there's no repentance. And so whenever he said, repent, repent, he's saying, change the way that you're doing Stop doing what you're doing. I'm sending my son to send him the word to tell you change. So if grace meant everything that Jesus did was saving me and I don't have to change my ways, then the message would have been repent during this time of the law, but after that you can go back and do the same thing you were doing before. Makes no sense. Repent. He empowered us through the Holy Spirit to live that life that's holy right. That's where change came in. Change your ways. I'm going to empower you to do that. That's how things begin to change. You can't do it on your own. The law will be recovered. People try and they fail miserably to do it on their own. You know how you can get someone to stop going through that cycle of, of trying to be good on their own and then do it? Get them working for the Lord. As they begin to do things in the Spirit, that flesh is dying out. As you begin to walk in the Spirit, it says you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? Because the Spirit rises up and you kills out those desires to do the wrong things. But if you want to get someone out of that, take them from walking in the Spirit and let them start walking in the flesh. It's the same process. Whoever you feed, whatever side you feed, the flesh or the Spirit, will control your life. It will produce the fruit. In uh, Hebrews, it says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. But you couldn't be defiled. Over and over again, the Bible says that you can be defiled. He says, bitterness springing up troubles them and defiles them. Bitterness is, that word up there, if you look at bitterness, it's poison. Bitterness kills you. It defiles you. You can be bitter about a lot of things. I don't know. I hate this election. It makes me yeah. You can see people rant, rant, rant. And you're like, don't you have any peace? <laughs> I, I've, some people I've had to either hide everything that they put on Facebook or unfriend them just because everything that they put was about political, political, political. I'm like, you've got to have a, a more of a life than just that. Because it can make you so bitter. I've known people that they always watch certain channels. And it's like when you come in, there's negativity, negativity, negativity. I'm like, watch something else. <laughs> That's why I watch the news. Unless there's something I want to see. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm having bitter towards someone else. 
uh, a lot of times that person don't even realize that uh, that you have this bitterness. You're the one that's affected. They're not even being affected by it. I think Wade Phillips said at one time that um, you know the devil doesn't care who's wrong as long as there's a problem or who's right. He really cares working on both sides anyways. A lot of times when there's an argument fight. Well, I, I'm a pastor, and he made the comment on that. He says, you can be right about something, but if you get in a bad spirit about it, you just throw this out. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Our attitude should reflect Christ no matter if we're on the right side or wrong side of it.